up, friends? Jacob is here once again, and do you hear that? The old school music playing? Yeah, that's right. We're about to buckle up. We have some interesting things to talk about. Virgin birth. That's right. A, ver a literal virgin birth. But it's symbolic. It's, it's prophetic, if you will. That means that it ties into the things that are going on in the world and the things of God. And you! How cool is that? Big discoveries. Lots of interesting things. Lots of blah blah stuff going on, you know? See 666 everywhere. Oh, good grief, this show is packed. It's packed. Can't wait to share it with all of you. So buckle up. Welcome back to the program. Jacob's here once again. If you're new to the channel, I'm so happy that you're here. <laughs> Look at that, huh? We all, uh, we're all part of the, uh, the Israelite family, I guess. That's what some people like to say. Give you a little update. Turns out my 10-year-old Ethan, he's got COVID. That's right. It's been now six days. Six days of, uh, you know, me just saying, hey, get back in your room. You know, you, you, there's so much buildup. You get scared. You get worried about these things. But, you know, it's one of these things I try to tell people in the book of Job. He says, my greatest fears come upon me. And what I've learned in life is that every single thing... <laughs> Literally every single thing that I've been scared of, every single thing that I didn't want to deal with, well, the Lord put it right in, right in front of me. Everything. I've lost everything. Uh, everything you could think of. It's everything that I worried about from when I was a little, 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 little lad growing up into the, uh, the big Jacob that I am today. Everything. So, you know, I have to face it. I was, ironically, I was even looking into some life insurance policies right before this because you figure, oh, you know, just in case... And then here it is. So, you know, I'm not going to spend that extra money now. But he's doing good. Thank God. It's been very mild. It's kind of uh, just, you know, about now five days. 100 degree fever now and then. Maybe giving him Tylenol and Moltrum twice a day. I mean, not even that much. He's, uh, he's handling it great. So we're very thrilled. And uh, because now he's got the immunity. So I don't, you know, it's, uh, it's crazy what's going on. The world. The land of the dead. That's what it is. The land of the dead. It's no wonder that Facebook named their uh, their new parent company after uh, the dead. Yeah, that's right, Meta. I don't know if you knew this, but in Hebrew, now this is important. Because this is the book, right? The Facebook. It's the book of the dead now. Meta in Hebrew, it means, uh, it means dead. Death. Very strange, very strange indeed, because, you know, the, listen, Mark Zuckerberg, he's, uh, I think he's Jewish, you know, he's a practicing Jew, I believe, I don't know, he was, he blew the shofar, the same time my, uh, my good friend Mary blew the shofar on Ellen a couple of years ago, it's a Hebrew word, so, I mean, I'm sure they know what they're doing, you know, place of the dead, those that are ignorant of the truth of God, place that are people that are suffering, people that aren't living their life. The book, Facebook, has now become the book of the dead. Okay, very cool. Even cooler, you know, the uh, they changed the name because they had a lot, of, a lot of blowback with the whistleblower and a lot of stuff. So now they got this new ad agency that's, you know, handling their business. Francis Haugen. Hmm. I did a program, a whole program. If you haven't seen it on Facebook, check it out. But Francis Haugen. Check this out. Her name, the one freed, or the free man, or the free one. And you know what Haugen means? Burial mound. The one that's been freed from the place of the dead. Come on, Facebook place of the dead. This is very, uh, that's quite a coincidence. Now I'd like to point out that death, physical death, is really just kind of a symbol of the spiritual death that we all suffer from. In Adam, all men die. Scriptures say to be carnally minded is death, but righteousness and peace, this is life. 
So yes, a place that, you know, has you focused on things that are trivial, that aren't sincere, that are fake, that are phony, that are viral, meaning you can catch it. Probably the place of the dead, so I guess the name is good. In Adam all die, but in Christ all men will be made alive. That's the two men that we talk about. The first man is ignorant of the truth. Second man is from heaven above, the scripture says. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You become born again. And ironically, uh, the days that this happens, talk about this in Matthew 24, where it says, look, you know, the day that's coming, if they say, here's Christ or there's Christ, don't go. So, I mean, that's interesting, right? Because everybody's expecting one just, you know, person to be there declaring themselves to be God. And uh, they would think that that would be the Christ, right? Everybody's coming again. But the scripture says very clearly, says, don't go. There are going to be many false Christs that rise up in the day. Don't follow after them. show you great signs and wonders, it says in Matthew 24, so much so that it could even fool the very elect. You know, Kanye West and Marilyn Manson and Justin Bieber, they got together, everybody dressed up in white, you know, in a round big circle, and they were in the center of the circle, of course, because, you know, the stars of the show, supposedly they were praying for demons to be cast on. It's, it's, you judge a tree by its fruit. So, of course, you know, the, uh, the light of God, sometimes the, tr the truth is uh, is is um, something that you, you have to find humbly and submit to, but the lie many times is disguised and called the truth. So you tell me. I mean, I, th I, I am going to call all that a little suspect. I'm not going to be following after them because they're very much the leaders. And um, I don't want to lead. <laughs> you know that. I want to inspire you and entertain you and get you excited. And, and it makes me feel great when I read all your comments and I see how wonderful things are and how happy you've been and how things have changed so much since coming here. And I appreciate all of you that are now sharing it with others. I hear about people all the time. I get emails. They're like, they didn't even believe now. They love your show and they're praying and they're spirit filled and all that stuff. I'm like, thank God, not me. Not me. This is just the well. But the dead everywhere, right? The dead in Christ are supposed to rise first. So those that are dead, ignorant of the truth in Christ, they rise to life. This is the day we're talking about. Matthew 24. Why am I excited? Because it has to do with this virgin birth, which way, oh, this is interesting. Matthew 24 goes on to say that the Son of Man, when, it, when this happens, that you won't be going over here, going over there to see a literal person because he's, he's, they'll say he's in the desert. Don't go there. They'll say he's over in the secret chambers. You know, you, oh, you gotta be part of the club. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta pay and you gotta get in. You gotta, you gotta be part of the mystical ceremonies. You gotta be part of the secret orders. Christ is not there either, according to Matthew 24. But as lightning comes from heaven from the east to the west, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man, the revealing of the Son of Man. If we're mankind, the Son of Mankind would be birthed out of man, Christ in you. Do you see the symbolism? He's called the Lord of Hosts. A host is a temple, if you will, for the Holy Spirit, which we are. This is great news. We can't fail. But in that day, wherever the carcasses are there will be the vultures <laughs> circling above, gathering together. So the day, the day of the Son of Man, the day of Christ, the r resurrection of Christ, the return of Christ, if you will, but Christ never really left. So a better word is the, the coming of Christ, erkame in Greek, to be manifested, to be revealed, that which is hidden, hidden no more, the truth, the power, the wisdom of God, the righteousness of God revealed in the world that day. Guess what's circling above? Vultures, vultures, it's a sign. Vultures.
vultures. In that day, they're vultures, they're circling, gathering, gathering. You know what a vulture is? It's a bird of prey. You know what, what kind of bird of prey? It's in the Bible, ooh, very symbolic of God's judgment. God's judgment that's about to come. It's gonna come in such an hour, like one hour, boom. It's gonna be major upheaval, it's not gonna matter. It's not gonna matter. They say there's like one city, it's gonna kaput. You know, I've been talking about the good old uh, NYC. But it would be like that. It would be like in, a minst in, in an instant, in an hour, the whole world changes. So everything that's going on right now, God's going to release us from it. Release us from it. I'm looking forward to it. How do I know this? Because the scriptures say that. The vulture is a symbol of uh, God's judgment. Symbol of uncleanness. In Revelation 18, that's the gathering place. It's Babylon. It's nothing but a haunt for like the foulest of birds, the most vile of birds, vultures being the uh, the ugliest of the bunch. Now, <laughs> you're gonna like this. This is cool. This is cool. A lot of you have been here for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for staying. Do you remember I said something about was about to be birthed in the world? You know, with the eggs and everything else. And we know there's more to it than that. I, you know, some things I can talk about, some things I can't. I leave it up to you. You go to God and let God will reveal all things. But isn't it interesting that, uh, you know, the virgin birth that everybody talks about? I have stuff on that, by the way. I have like essays and videos on it. Go to my website, jacobisrael.com. Subscribe there. Very important. Subscribe there. It's free. And uh, if anything happens with me here, please, you'll be able to get notified and you'll know when I have new videos. So you won't miss out. Not that I plan on, I don't think it's gonna happen. I think I'm okay. I think I'm all right. I think the Lord has me where I'm supposed to be. I'm not big enough, they keep me, you know, I'm not big enough yet to be, uh, you know, I guess a, a threat to the system. <laughs> I let the Lord do all that work. Vultures, they're bad creatures, spooky creatures. The worst, ugh, ugly. The virgin birth that everybody talks about, right? The wonderful thing. You, a virgin is one that is, you know, is no longer um, having relations or has not had relations with the world anymore, if you will. Made pure, uh, a maid. You've, you're clean. You're ready to go. In other words, we're, we're, we're supposed to become like that. We become the bride of Christ. All white. That's why it was interesting with Kanye and Marilyn. They were all dressed in white. It's like they got to, but they, that's, it's not about <laughs> dressing literally in white. It's about being pure within. Emmanuel, which means God with us, in us, as us. Virgin, us, right? So so in a sense, it's like Christ, we, uh, we were born again. There's a birth of Christ. Isn't it interesting? I said that the world was gonna be doing the, 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 the spooky, the spooky unclean births, right? And guess, guess what just had a virgin birth? A vulture, the California condor. Can you believe that? That's, that's weird. You have this bird, this, this scary monstery bird, this one, which is a symbol of God's judgment, big judgment, it's coming, kaboom. Eh, first time it's recorded, this bird gave a virgin birth. True story. Virgin birth in uh, and then endangered California condors. A type of vulture that feeds, by the way, on what? Dead animals. U.S. wildlife researchers have discovered that two, not just one, two, duality, twins, right? 11-11, <laughs> two. Because there's the, the earthly sinister version and then there's the spiritual. There's always a, a copy, a carbon-based life form, 666. Gonna get into everybody saying all the blah blah blahs in a sec, but the 666 carbon, carbon copy of what's going on in the kingdom of God. So you have these two condors, which are critically endangered, big deal. They gave birth without a male genetic DNA, with nothing, nothing, just spontaneous. It's like boom, all of a sudden I'm pregnant, right? They got that going on in the American Horror Story, where the aliens are making hybrids. Without the, with the humans, without the humans knowing, and they are abducting a bunch of, you know, and then they were, maybe the condor was abducted by aliens, you know? There's 
should be like a probe into that, get it? So this condor, this vulture, this bird symbol of God's <laughs> judgment on the really corrupt people in the world, Babylon the Great, by the way, dwelling place of demons, the vulture, which is symbolic. It's also shown in Matthew 24 and also in Luke 17. The vulture giving birth spontaneously, a symbol of uh, the system's antichrist, if you will, but also a symbol of God's judgment that is about to come. Facebook, which we know has done such harm, probably, but uh, once again, the Lord has uses everything. Everything that the devil meant for harm, God will use and use for good. Well, the Book of the Dead, right? The Book of the Dead. But the one that escapes the system, Francis Haugen, that escapes the Book of the Dead, is a free man from the burial tomb. Free one. We're going to be freed. We're going to be set free. You know the Book of the Dead in Egypt? You know what it is? It's a bunch of Egyptian spells, witchcraft. That's right. They ch for trying to be eternal, infinite, by using spells and incantations and all that gobbledygook. You know, it does seem like the place of the dead, though. You know, I tell you, even with Ethan, you know, him dealing with the virus of the crown right now, which is what he has. He's home. You know, when I'm doing this show, I'm, you know, I hear him coughing, coughing, coughing. It makes you, uh, you know, as a parent, it makes, you, it makes you nervous. So far, he's handling it great. I appreciate all your prayers and everything for the house. Thank you very much. But it's, you know, the, it's, you've been told to be so scared for so long. And uh, so far, um, he's okay. But that fear, you know, that death, the fear of death, it's like a, it's like a prison. They're like shackles. Really, the Lord is, is telling me that I need to just stop being so scared all the time over silly things. Things that you can't handle. Things that, things that you, you know, are beyond your control. My greatest fear has come upon me. My greatest fear has come upon me. You know, as a father, you want to take care of your children. You want to be able to provide. You want to, you know, you want to, you want to, you want to keep everybody safe. But I can't do that. I can only do the best that I can. I can't do that. I have to have trust and I have to have faith that, that God's in charge of all this. God's in charge. God's in charge of it all. He numbered the days of man. He numbered the hairs on your head. Man is trying everything man can do to become God without submitting to God. Kind of like the uh, the false idea of who you think you are, the Antichrist. The exact opposite of God takes over, is in charge, and you want it to persist, the Book of the Dead, through incantations and spells and everything else. No matter how much I try to push back the wind, <laughs> the wind's still coming. The wind's still coming. The judgment's still coming. And there's nothing that's going to stop it. This world has shown its face. Everything from seeing the 666 everywhere, which is the number of man. Now you got blah, blah, blah everywhere. I, I think that it's, I think it's pretty interesting that I, I kind of, uh, I think I was the first to really kind of point these things out. And I love that even now Boris Johnson is saying blah, blah, blah. One of you sent that to me right before I was taping the show. I'm sorry, I forgot who you were, but very cool. Six years ago, when we agreed to net zero and to try to restrain the rise in the temperature of the planet to 1.5 degrees, and all those promises will be nothing but Blah, 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 to coin a phrase. Blah being the, uh, in Chaldean, which is in the scripture, 
kind of the enemy of God, if you will, the Chaldeans, bad people, the beast system, right? It means six, blah. So, you know, you got Greta Thunberg on there getting everybody the chant, no more blah, blah, you know, whatever. No more blah, blah, blah. Just, come on. <laughs> Somebody writes that stuff for her. The reason that they're allowing people to uh, see all of this nonsense is so that, you know, you think that there's a uh, balance to the equation. You think there's somebody that's keeping people in check. They're letting you speak at the UN, you know, and if they're letting you speak at these big events and they're giving you a lot of coverage, it's probably a good call that maybe the system's okay with you doing it. I'm not saying that they're, uh, that that's the way it is. Maybe, uh, Maybe Thunberg is, uh, you know, she's all the rage, by the way, this, <laughs> this young teen on the cover of uh, Time magazine. That apocalyptic cover. She's sitting right back there in the back and then you got the cardboard cut out of the queen. <laughs> Some people say that she's not nearly alive anymore. In any event, I don't have a lot of control, neither do you. We can feel very much out of control, and that's why it's important to have faith. That's why it's important to just trust that God's in charge, that God's leading us and guiding us. And that's why I talk about all of these interesting little things that I find. Because they are, they're like little confirmations. It's going to be okay, Jacob. He's going to live, Jacob. So far, my son's doing great. He was doing great. I came, I started the show with, oh, he's doing great. And as I continued the tape, Continue to cough, continue to cough, continue to cough. And all of a sudden we're like, oh, it's taking a turn. We don't know. Fear. 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 It's got to go. It's got to go. Got to trust in the Lord. The fear. There's torment and fear, the scripture says. It's got to go. And I got to be a good, uh, I got to be a good example. So, of course, my greatest fear comes upon me. So I understand that it's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. Every single time. The Lord took what I feared the most and used it to catapult me in the direction that He ordained, which is far greater than the path that I set myself. So I guess my message, if there is my message here, judgment's coming. Big one. Coming. I've been saying it is, but it's coming. How do I know this? Well, I don't know for sure, but I do know that th this is the day, if there was ever a day. But there was a discovery of a wine press. Northern Iraq, over 2,700 years old, going back to, back to the day where this happened and there's nothing new under the sun happening again. The great wine press. The great wine press is there when the vultures are there. It's all there. It's all laid out. It's all laid out. Judgment's coming. It'll be the same day as it was in Noah's day. It'll be the same day as it was in Lot's day. So will be the son of man's day, eating and drinking, having a good old time. It'll be like that. And then sudden choo, destruction. On that day, no one who is on the housetop with possessions inside should go down to get them. In other words, it's going to come so quick. You're not going to be like, okay, pack a bag. Make sure we got some MREs. Make sure we got that water purifier. In that day, this day of judgment that's coming, it's going to be like that. Likewise, the one that's in the field should not go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep their life is going to lose it. Whoever loses their life will preserve it. What, is, what are we talking about here? We're talking about getting over fear. We're talking about getting over the idea that I can keep everybody safe in my house. That I, you know, if I wear enough masks or I've got gloves or goggles when he's coughing, maybe I'll be okay. And don't judge me. I did with, I mean, you know, I want to be safe too. I don't like getting sick. I've always not liked germs. But so far, thank God, so good. So far, I, you know, for the last five, 
days, I was like, not even a hundred fever, body aches. It wasn't until I started taping this show that he has his coffin fit. We wouldn't stop, I had to keep stopping the show. True, sad, and he's doing great now, he's okay. And we, you know, after I put in the humidifier and gave him a little inhaler and all of this stuff, you know, the day we're in, I tell you, on the night, two people in one bed, one will be taken, one will be left. Two will be grinding at the mill together, one will be taken, one, one will be left. Where, Lord, he says, where? Where is this going to happen? And Christ replied, where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. Think about that for a second. Think about that for a second. The vultures would be this beast system that's trying to give birth, right, without God. And then here we have the vulture, the California condor, giving birth without a male. Interesting. Got to let go of our fear. We got to really, really let go of our fear. We got to let go of our worry and our doubt. And we need to really just press in and know that the day is at hand. And when the day is, when it happens. So in other words, don't get so worried that you got to prepare, prepare, prepare. In that day, you may not have time. Instead, because God delivers those that serve him. Instead, return. Come to me, the Lord says. And I'll give you rest. Don't you want some rest? You deserve it. We all do. Because God created it that way. So let's stop worrying about our self-effort. Thank God Ethan's not coughing anymore. So I can finish this show and tell you all how much I love you. I hope you have the best day ever. And, um, you know, do me a favor. Please, of course, share the video around. Please hit that like. Leave a comment. Go to my website, jacobisrael.com, subscribe there, get yourself an I Am A Witness t-shirt or jacket or whatever, and the, the novel, you know, the novel, which is, um, I hope more people read and I hope more people learn about because I really believe it's a great way. Could you imagine this awesome book, all of you have read it, this amazing adventure that's such an allegory and a wonderful revelation for our day today. Could you imagine more people see it and then it becomes a movie and then everybody comes back and then we all, we all become a family together. Interesting. The world is uh, about to change in a mighty way. So buckle up. I love you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Jacob Israel. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this channel around. If these shows have helped you, help Jacob to reach more any way you can and have the best day ever. Click it.